<laughs> There's a, this is a message that, that somebody doesn't want to have out to all of our people. It's, uh, I don't know what's happening. So I'm now I'm using be live, which is the old reliable Facebook live platform that I've used for uh, uh, quite a while now that seems to be very reliable. So I'm going to use this instead because that other one is brand new and I can tell that it's just struggling to work right now uh, and it'll work right the the company uh we're, i'm actually interviewing the owner of the company next uh, actually thursday um uh, and um uh and we'll be talking about a couple of these glitches uh, for whatever reason why it's it's not working i have no idea why this is happening all right so i'm going to do something here now <laughs> to see if we can get through this because it's important i think this is important stuff uh that i'm trying to show you here and all right. Oh, that's not going to work. Hold on. All right. So I'm going to keep on talking. So we're, we're talking about that, um, that we needed to, uh, I wanted to show you this video that I could not get to operate here. I'm going to, I'm going to open it up in another window here and okay, let's see. Let's see if I can connect to this. Hold on. Share my screen, application window, there it is. All right, I think we're gonna be okay. We're gonna be okay, it's all gonna work. And those of you that are sticking around, you know what, you guys are the best. I, I need to give you some type of prize, I don't know what it is, uh, a new car or a new house or something for sticking around. Uh, but here we go, all right, so I'm going to go solo on this, I'm gonna play the video, stand by. But this is after, Right, this is all in, uh, I'm taking one video after the next. There's nothing happening in between. I know quite often people go, well, what did you do in between? No, we did, no, I did nothing. Um, I was just uh, uh, wanting to break up the video so that we can have, um, you know, different situations uh, where we can show the training and how it's working. All right, now I don't think you're gonna be able to hear the audio on this, uh, but I'm gonna, I'm, what I'm doing is uh, directing uh, Vivi Ray, which is my daughter, uh, with this dog, what to do. And I'm going to try to narrate it. Um, and unfortunately, because this is the one reason I wasn't trying to use be live is because you can't hear what I'm telling Vivi Ray or what I'm telling the dog. So uh, in this case, I think mostly I talked to Vivi Ray. So I'm going to push play. I'll turn the volume up. Oh, can't do that either. So there's an about turn. Now the dog tries to cut her off, but I tell her, I told her to not let the dog do that. Don't let the dog push you around. Don't let the dog go sniff that tree because that dog wanted to go sniff that tree. That was a. Don't let the dog sniff the bushes. Oh, the dog tried to do that and she said no to the dog. Again, this doesn't take a lot of pain, discomfort. It just takes direction, right? And we got to sit. Now, the sit was should have been in a heel position, but because. But because what we wanted from the dog is just an understanding of who's in control, even though we didn't get what we're gonna get later on is a stop and sit in the heel position, we got a stop and sit. And in this point, we don't need that, right? We just simply need the dog to understand that this little 10 year old girl who weighs about the same as the dog, maybe just slightly more, is in control. Regardless of what the dog wants to do, Right. If we're going to create a better relationship, what we want the dog to do is have respect for me and my daughter. So if I'm the dog owner, which I'm not, I'm the trainer. But if I'm the dog owner, what I want is the dog to be respectful of me, respectful of the children. Right. All the time. And that energy that you want to get out now through biting and that we're going to get rid of. We're going to give you an opportunity to get that that energy out in another way. Right. I promise you that if you learn to respect us and love us in the manner that we decide, not you, but we decide, then we're gonna allow you to have get out that information in other ways, there, not information, that energy out in other ways. And we have to begin to get that understanding. So remember, when we first bring the dog in, we do nothing with the dog, take the pinch collar off, we teach the dog there's some rules about eating, there's some rules about going in and out of doors, um, there's some rules about when I grab your collar, you're not allowed to put your mouth on my arm, right? And we'll do that by grabbing the collar and saying no when the dog is doing it. I did uh, make an error and the dog did bite me uh, early on when I first got it. Not out of aggression, but that's part of the, what the dog does. And we, we, we begin to set the stage, not through the pain of pinch collar, not through the discomfort of an electronic collar, not through anything other than 
healthy ways of communicating to the dog that this is allowed and this is not allowed. Just like we did on that video with my daughter. All right. So when the dog tried to cut her off, I said, do not do not let that dog cut you off. Right. You that dog must understand that the heel position is on your left hand side. So when she tries to do that, you're going to stay short on the leash and you're going to walk through her desire to uh, do that. Ensure that that's not that's not what she can do. Right. When the dog decides to go to the left towards the tree, you're going to keep the dog from going to the tree because that's not what you do under obedience communicating to the dog, right? When she turns around, the dog is looking left. It just, by luck, I told her to about turn. The dog was looking left. My daughter turned right. The dog realized, well, I can't do that either. I must be obedient during this process. I must walk at your heel. And then the dog attempted to sniff the bushes as she was walking past those bushes, but my daughter kept walking and showed the dog that this isn't the time that you do that stuff. You're on my time right now. I need you to show me respect and love through your actions. Right. And through that, I'm not going to treat you. I'm not going to mistreat you. Right. I'm just going to show you the path. And then once we've shown you the path and you followed our direction, we're going to let you get that energy out another way. And I'm going to show you how we do that with this dog. Right. Let me just show you one more time now that I've done that and, and kind of showed you uh, or described you what it is that we're doing. Now watch it again and you will see all this begin to happen. All right. It's going to restart here. Here we go. All right. As she's walking. About turn, she the, see how the dog was ahead of her a little bit. Now the dog tries to cut her off. She shorted the she shorted the leash, but you can see that dog is trying not to nip at her. Do you see that the dog licking his lips? The dog wanted to go to that tree. She didn't make it, let it happen. Right, the leash isn't tight though. The, the the leash is actually loose. That's what we want. We want a loose leash. Yep, the dog wanted to do something else. She didn't let the dog do it. She stayed strong. This is a ten year old girl. Right. <laughs> and again, and see the hesitancy, right? She waited until the dog turned its mouth and then she pet the dog, right? Such good stuff coming from my daughter there. How cool is that? I got to tell you that I'm very proud of her. <laughs> All right. Hey, Nicole, uh, different people are showing up at different times. If you want to know what we're talking about, you may have to watch the first Facebook Live just before this one and come back to this one if you want to put the two together. But I was using a bit of software that crashed on me before. All right. So you see how that works. So now you're saying, well, okay, what are you going to show her that she can do? I'm going to show her one of the things that she can do uh, uh, on uh, that will allow her to release her energy is she can search for narcotics. That's what we're training this dog to do. So now from here, what I do is I had I'd already set up a scenario where this dog can um, uh, search. And so now the dog is gonna be allowed to bite the toy. We're gonna play tug of war. We're gonna search. We're gonna do a bunch of different things here, okay? So here is where we are going to show this dog when is acceptable for it to do these other things. We're gonna show the dog that it's acceptable to bite and pull down and tug and do all this other kind of stuff when we say it is and uh, under the um, the appropriate circumstances. All right, so we're gonna bring this up. So it's solo and get rid of that one. Here we go. All right, so this is me. Disregard my, those are my Sunday shorts. <laughs> so here she makes a mistake. Look, she tries to grab the toy. Watch this, she jumps up. Oh. That really didn't deserve a correction because the toy was visible and she was she really only grabbed the toy. Uh, later on, I may give her a correction for doing that kind of stuff. There's my four-year-old son and she chooses not to chase after him, which she normally would have. This is brand. This is the first time this dog has ever searched a vehicle. The dog finds the narcotic, which is behind that license plate. I have to tell the dog to sit because she doesn't know the behavior yet. I don't reward her there because she's looking at me. I wait till she puts her nose back on the odor and then I reward. Her. Nice. All right. So there you go. So there is an example. Oops. Did that crash too? All right. Let me try that again because it looks like that didn't stick. <laughs> oh man. Do I love this stuff? All right. Let's go. Let's see if it'll stay this time. Go up. Make it solo. All right. Hold on. I'm going to find it. All right. Let's watch it again. Start from the beginning. <laughs> I love this. All right. Here in just a minute, you'll see the dog 
jump up after the toy and when it's under my armpit. I didn't teach her not to do this yet. And it would have been, by the time I would have been able to correct her, it would have been too late. So I chose not to correct her. I think that was a good choice on my part. There's my four-year-old son I was telling you about. She normally would have turned and tried to jump on him, but she didn't. My son's asking, are you training the dog to be good to us? And the answer is yes. All right. There she's putting her nose where the odor is. Teaching her to sit. I don't reward her until she puts her nose back on the odor. There. Nice. All right. Wow, this has been an exciting. <laughs> wow, this has been an exciting broadcast of uh, Falco Canine Academy. This is the most disheveled that uh, I've ever been. All right. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I fixed that. I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. This is crazy. This is crazy. I'm trying to show you something and uh, just everything is going haywire. This is what happens with uh, using Facebook Live uh, from time to time using some of these tools that don't want to cooperate. So do you see how all that works? Again, so let's revisit really quick. Uh, number one, a pinch collar is not the solution to everything in regard to dogs that are have really bad behavior, aggression, jumping, lunging, biting, uh, all this kind of stuff. Now, why is it used? Again, uh, I'll revisit that. Because in many cases, it it stops it from happening for that moment while the pin collar is on, but it's not training the dog necessarily all the time. And it's quite often not helping the relationship, right? You put the pinch collar on, you put the electronic collar on. And again, I, I have recommended it for many people. And sometimes it's based on, the I, I mean, correct that. Almost always, if not always, the pinch collar is chosen for the human being, not because of the dog. Let me say that again, I, and I haven't said that yet today. But the pinch collar quite often in the past has been selected for the human being because it is that tool that this human being needs to get control over the dog, just simply to keep the dog from lunging, barking, growling, snarling, biting other people. The pinch collar is being used because I think the human being needs it in order to at least be able to walk down the street. So we've recommended it. We've helped people use it properly. We've helped people um, uh, choose when to use it and when not to use it. However, is it actually fixing the problem? Is it is it helping the relationship? And in many cases, I would say no. All right. And so same thing with electronic collar. If we can, through science and through training and through understanding, teach the dog and the human being in a, in a way that fixes the relationship and helps the, under, uh, the human understand how it is that we can show the dog that this bad behavior is not allowed through science and through a different way of, uh, of, uh, of conducting our training. If we can do it that way, that helps build the relationship, is that not a better way? I think so. And that's what the human dog transformation system is that we are teaching trainers right now as we speak uh, to do is to look at it from a different perspective, as Aldo would put it, through a scientific uh, perspective so that the human being can understand, oh, I see, by doing this, this will happen, and not necessarily always through pain and discomfort, all right? Again, does th do those things work? Yes, they get, the, they get the action, they get the action to stop, but that's really not training the dog not to do it. It's, it's sometimes it's causing the dog to, to hold in that negative energy, to harness that negative energy, and then it comes out in other ways. In some ways, it's uh, through bad health. Sometimes dogs that are having to hold in that negative energy and not let it out is they start to chew on their paws or chase their tails or pace through a kennel, uh, a bunch of other things that can begin to happen and, and kind of manifest uh, uh, from holding in that negative energy. Isn't it better to teach the dog that if you, if you behave and give us love and respect and understand our boundaries, we will give you the opportunity to allow you to get that energy out in another way and in an appropriate time doing something else entirely different, right? And that is a better way of going. So yes, there you go. All right. So that is what we're doing on this. That's what we're working on. That's what we're training our trainers through the HDT system or the human dog transformation system. That is what we're trying to do is to take a dog like this one who is from, I don't know how old, uh, uh, wearing the pinch collar because it's out of control to teaching the dog what appropriate behavior is without the pinch collar and the flat collar. And having a 10 year old walk the dog down the street is an example of how that all works. All right. So 
that was exciting. That was fun. And uh, I persevered and got through it. And uh, we'll probably do this again another time and kind of lay it out so that we're not having all the other stuff happening. It causes uh, the teaching to go way down because I'm here pushing buttons and pulling up other things <laughs> and trying to get it to work. And I know that the message is kind of lost during all that kind of stuff. So I understand that. So I appreciate you sticking around, especially you, Michelle and Amy and, and Daria and uh, Nicole. That's who else joined us. So I appreciate all of your perseverance and coming through. I know that not everybody was able to kind of stomach coming through all this stuff, but uh, I appreciate those of you that did. All right. That is it for me. I got to get something to eat. I'm really hungry. All right. I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye.